Hey, Steph Abobit here. Welcome to another podcast slash YouTube video. I've been doing a lot of my education now on Patreon. And as you know, I like working with students in a group and Patreon and Zoom actually work really well. So head on over there and check that out. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to let you in on a little bit of what we do in Patreon and give you some really valuable information. First thing, we're going to have a little bit of a talk on mixing colors. And I think get rid of some of the doubts and some of the ideas that you might have on mixing color and really try to make it really much more easier. The second thing that we're going to be talking about is preliminary sketches. Now, these questions came in from students around the world, and I try to answer them through my Zoom calls through Patreon. And the question was, you know, should I do a preliminary sketch, a preliminary painting? At what point do I abandon that painting to finish it off onto a bigger canvas? So we talk a little bit about that, and then we address negative self-talk. I know it's part of being an artist, and I know that a lot of you have that. You might not admit to it, but the reality is it exists in all of us. So be stay tuned for that. It's an interesting conversation. At the end, I'm going to give you some information about my new book, which is definitely coming out. It is fabulous. It's 400 pages, 500 pictures. It is a book that all plein air painters, it's called the Stefan Bauman's Ultimate Field Guide to Plein Air Painting. So you want to be able to check that out. But in the meanwhile, check out this little Zoom call that I have with some of my Patreon students, and I'll talk to you on the other end. So the question is, is like, you know, you have a hard time figuring out the color palette. And then you, you're doing a sketch. You're not quite sure when to end the sketch and go to the painting. So let me go into this. So it's going to be, you know, it's like, so first thing, I use about five colors, five to seven, yeah, maximum eight. Those extra colors are like dioxide purple. Um, uh, some odd colors that, you know, you can only get that way. But for the most part, I use you know, two, two blues, two reds. Actually, two blues, one yellow, one red, a brown, uh, white. I mean, that's basically it. All those colored charts that you see at the, at the hardware store, all of those things are done in basically three colors. So you, the, the Home Depot charts out there, they have all of the color charts out there of all the different colors you can get. And you click a color and you go to the guy, you say, here, mix this. And their carousel basically has three or four colors on it. Um, it's wow. basically red, yellow, and blue. And you know, with all of those theory, all of those people out there, all of that nah, color stuff, everybody gets to the same color. And if you buy this wonderful color, you'll have to dull it down so it's like another color that you buy. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's like there are certain colors like dioxide purple. If you're painting irises, it's like, oh my God, you have to have dioxide purple. Forget it otherwise. Um, so, so there are colors that you need, you need, but how often times are you painting irises? So, uh, you know, you, you kind of keep it in your trunk if you're a planar painter. So the first thing is, is stop it with all of the recipes. There are artists that come to me and I go, so what was your teaching in the background? They go, well, I had a teacher and her palette was 32 colors. And I go, whoa, how long did it take you to squeeze out 32 colors? And I'm not kidding. These, these, the, these wannabe teachers out there, they're like, the reason this is between you and me here. This is, this is you know, it's a big secret here is that you know, the reason why a lot of these artists have all those colors is because they don't know how to mix colors. So it's a lot easier to put out yellow ochre and Naples yellow. I can get there with the colors that I use. And you know, Home Depot has no problem getting to those colors either with there's a little small carousel of, of primary colors in there. So you don't need to have 32 colors and you don't need to pre-mix all this stuff and you don't need to it's just get off the color wagon. It's not that important anyway. I mean, you know, the, the color of the highlight that's on a face or on an orange is exactly the same. It's the color of the light. The color of the shadow, the color of the shadow is, is just a basic color. It's, it's actually goes to a brown blue. It's kind of in between 
asphaltum or burnt umber and ultramarine blue. That's a color shadow. You can't see color in shadow because there's no light in shadow. In order to see, you have to see light. Now, there is some light in shadow that's reflective light. Yeah, so, so that's you know, your three primary colors, basically. So you, you kind of have to get that. If you're sitting around making sketches uh, to figure out a color, I could tell you the color of that flesh pretty easy, and I'm not even looking at your painting. So the color of an object is going to be a variation of either a red or yellow or blue. Doesn't really matter what yellow, what red, what blue. If you kind of know a little bit about how to get colors, which is what I coach, you know, how to get why we use certain colors, warm and cool colors, the secret that color is really easy. You don't need to do a study on colors. It's very simple to try to figure that out. Then you don't need to do a study uh, of your study. Don't waste your time doing a, a preliminary sketch on something. On no note on zone when I do my workshops. It's like, don't do preliminary sketches. Because you spend your all that time doing preliminary sketches, your ideas. Like you said, you don't know when to jump off of your preliminary sketch to get to your original painting. It's like, no, it's like, don't waste your time doing it. Just start off on your painting. You don't need to preliminary sketch anything and figure out if it's a good idea. Most of you are working from photographs anyway. So put that painting on the canvas and let's go in. The great thing about oil painting is that it is forgiving. So if you end up painting a really ugly flesh tone and you get the face wrong on, you know, on your canvas, you can correct it. You just paint over it or wipe it off and do another one. It's very forgiving. So you could do it twice or three times. Maybe if you do a watercolor, you kind of have to like use a little preliminary thought. But that's part of trying to get the concept of the painting which is one of my keys. The first key is, is developing a concept. And in that concept, you can kind of figure out where the highlights and shadows are. But the problem that you have if you're doing a preliminary sketch is that you haven't had a conversation with yourself about the concept. And usually the concept is part of the, the, the composition. And usually the composition is generated through good lighting. And so you could take the, the, the stupidest you know, pose and, or the worst landscape you can make it work with just how you handle the lights. And believe me, I've been teaching at least 100 students every week for over 40 years. And I've had students come in, I teach them online, and they come in with awful, awful concepts, awful, awful, awful paintings and compositions, and with a few little hints on correcting your, your, your effects of light everything could be turned over into a, a big masterpiece. Um, and I've had the experience to do that. So trust me is that don't biddle around with, you know, preliminary sketches and stuff. But I find that all that preliminary sketches are doing a small one for a big one. Because a lot of times people will go out and do a planar painting and say, well, I'm going to blow this up to be a bigger painting. Is that when you figure it out in a little sketch, half the fun of painting is figuring it out. And if you spent all of your energy trying to figure it out, you look at that big canvas and go, eh, I have to paint it again. When there's so much other stuff to do, why don't I just finish the little sketch and call it, call it good? You know? So if you're going to spend your time painting a little sketch, then finish it and make it into a grand painting. One of my favorite paintings is a Fragnard, and it's a little tiny painting about this bit. And it's two sisters in a pillow fight with the window open. And it's magnificent. Paintings don't have to be bigger to be great. The Mona Lisa, some people say it's great. I think it's way overrated. But we'll do another blog on that in the future. But the thing is, it's like, it's not a big painting. It has a big presence, but it's not a very big painting. So you don't have to go bigger with anything. Just start your sketch smaller and just go through it. Start off with a really basic palette that you use for portraits and landscapes. They don't have to be different. You know, there's a lot of artists out there that give recipes 
You know, it's like, this is how you paint copper. This is how you paint this. It's like, don't waste your time with a lot of these artists. Is that they've been just told or they bought the book on, you know, how to paint everything in the colors that they are. It's like, just paint what you see. And if you watch my videos on YouTube, it's like Mrs. Gugolinski, paint what you see, but you've got to know what it is that you're looking at. And that's where having a coach or a teacher or my Patreon, we start having you look at things and trying to figure things out, but we get to the real thing. So hopefully that answers your question. You have one more question, you have one more question here that uh, every painting I do, I always have to go through a lot of negative self-doubt. I can't paint, et cetera, suggestions. I don't want to stuff it down. That is unhealthy. And I thought that is an amazing question. And I think I thank you for the bravery of you saying that. And so I'm familiar with, with your work. And I have to say that, you know, you are a good artist. You actually, you don't have to worry about um, the negative thoughts and, and the, the things that you have to realize that yeah, a lot of that self-doubt and all of that, that, that thing you carry, that's just part of being an artist. So when you feel like you have self-doubt and, you know, why do you think artists have a reputation of drinking too much or doing drugs and having you know, unhealthy lifestyles? It's because we all suffer from that negativity and doubt. And part of being an artist, and we discussed this in my book too, that, you know, when we do our first painting, we get all kinds of rewards. We go, wow, I can't believe I actually painted a painting. I did a happy tree. Mm -hmm. And so we love that. Yeah, that feeling. It's like the first time, I don't know this, but they tell me when you do cocaine or, or meth, you get such a high from it that you spend the rest of your life trying to get that high again. And I think if some of you have heard that before, and that's kind of where the, the addiction starts. And the problem with painting is that there you are, is that you get that high, like, wow, I actually did this. I actually did what Bob Ross told me. And, and it, it worked, ah, wow. And everybody's like, wow, you're so talented. But then the reality comes is that you start looking at other artists and you go, oh my God, but look at how good they are. And then you go, wow, I can never be that good. Oh, no. And the thing is, the biggest secret there is that every one of us professional artists go through that every day of our lives. You will never overcome that because when you finally reach the next tier of where you think you'd like to be, there's somebody there that's painting better than you and you're going to start getting self-doubts again. And you're going to be real negative about your work. And you got to start drinking and doing drugs and hanging out with prostitutes late at night down. Oh, wait, don't go down on that street. But anyway, so so the thing is being having self-doubt, being negative is 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 part of just wanting to be great. You want to get good. And and that negativity is a positive thing because it pushes you forward. Don't succumb to it use that as a way and realize that that's what's causing you to work harder to to try to grow better and when you see artists that are better than you or giving you advice listen to it try to get better from that and and accept that that negativity is just part of being an artist and you can't paint you know my god they've got monkeys that are painting that are selling paintings and so you know it's like the <laughs> What is painting? It's just nothing but a bunch of colored mud on a piece of canvas. What you do with it is all up in here. I mean, it's not real. It's just mud with color on a piece of fabric. I mean, you paint a tree, a dog doesn't pee on it. It's like they get it, but we have this brain thing in here. And you know, it's got, you know, once we see it real, it's got to look real. But the thing is, it's not, it's just a bunch of mud. So you don't need to be afraid of this. Get out there and try it. You can do it. I've seen your paintings. And the thing is, if you're negative, find a couple of other artists that you can hang out at the bar with and you can talk about yeah, how negative you are. Don't stuff it down. I mean, don't cut off your ear either. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's you know, live with it. It's not healthy to be negative. Accept it, embrace it, and just look at it as a way of moving forward. And when the world, you know, moves along and you look an hour back, a year back at what you've done, 
and you look back and you go, wow, I've really grown. I don't need to be negative or have self-doubt. I actually learned something. And when I show students that are in my coaching program and I show them a painting and I go, you're going to be painting like that in a year. They go, no, I'll never be able to paint like that. And a year goes by and I show them a painting. And I go, remember when I told you you're going to paint like that? They're going to go, really? Wow, I'm so much better than that now. So the thing is, whatever you have in your head isn't true anyway. And you'll only get better if you just practice and grace, embrace the, 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 the negativity as, as a thing to push you forward into a new hemisphere. And one of the things I always tell students, if you watch my videos, is that you, know, you don't become a master painter unless you have a whole garage full of crap. So you know, that's part of it. you got to cover a lot of canvases. And if you listen to any artist that says that they've never made a mistake, they're imposters. Because every one of those great artists that you admire all have a garage full of crap. So kind of get that. We produce crap. Right now, we think it looks great. A year from now, you're going to think even your great paintings look crappy. So embrace it. Love it. And hopefully I'll talk to you all next week on Patreon. And if you have any questions or if you guys want to start ordering my book, the information is out on Facebook. Uh, you can click on their pre-order. The book will be out. We have ordered it. The printer is printing them as we speak. And if you want to get an early copy, it is going to be an amazing book. It's 400 pages, 500 photographs. Um, and it's all about, it's not an ego book. It does reveal everything, what we talk about, how to produce a painting, eye magnets, checkering, everything that I talk about in my videos, and the big reveal about temperatures that, you know, a lot of my students have, but if you don't, if you're not clear on that, then do that. So anyway, you guys rock. I will talk to you next week, and you have a fantastic weekend. Stay cool. So that was fascinating. I enjoy doing these talks with my students. If you have any questions, just email them to me at stephanbaumannartist at gmail.com. I will try to offer a little bit more of these insights on YouTube. You can also attend our Patreon group. As always, I have my YouTube. If you want some information about workshops or my new book, just go to my website at www.stephanbaumann.com. But the best way to learn quickly is to just pick up the phone and give me a call at 415-606-9074. That's my personal line. If you want to improve your painting, now seriously, we're talking about going from Stephen to Stefan in under a year. Take my coaching. It's not that expensive. You pay more for groceries in a week than you will for, for that. And if you're nervous or you're waiting, till the perfect time to do it, you will regret that you just don't call me right now. So give me a call, 415-606-9074. And look forward to some more of these Zoom calls. And I look forward to seeing you on Patreon. Have a grand day.